Hi, I'm Bob McCouch with High Availability. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the procedure to do a password reset on Cisco UCS. As it turns out, the password reset procedure for UCS is not terribly well documented. Cisco's got documentation which assumes that you've got at least one working password or account to get into the UCS. Well, it turns out I had a customer who unfortunately lost the only password to the admin account, which was the only account locally defined on their UCS, and they couldn't get into it at all. So I started researching some other options to access this UCS, and it turned out that through some blog posts and forum threads, I discovered that it was in fact possible to load the UCS without knowing the boot parameters ahead of time uh, and simply doing a directory from the bootloader to determine a viable boot image. The problem I found is that the image available from the directory command is usually not the most current image running on the system. So the danger there is that you may end up booting a really old UCS image which could cause problems with your configuration. So I developed the procedure that I show on the left here which really is oriented around uh, doing a reboot of the subordinate FI, Fabric Interconnect, before starting the actual password reset so that you can watch the boot log from console and determine which images are actually being booted. Now in theory, the process of rebooting the one Fabric Interconnect and watching the boot log to see what happens should be non-disruptive, but I'd certainly recommend doing it in a maintenance window just to be safe. Additionally, we may not know for sure which Fabric Interconnect is active and which one is subordinate. So I'm assuming that A is active and B is subordinate and we'll reboot B first, although we could be incorrect in that assumption, in which case we will actually cause a failover of the UCS manager function. So let's kick this procedure off so you can see how it works. And just as a note, end to end this whole procedure took me about a half an hour, but I'll speed that up through movie magic so that you don't have to watch so many blinking cursors. So as you can see here, we've got our fabric interconnects, A and B, each on serial console. And the first thing that we're going to do is reboot our B fabric interconnect, again under the assumption that that one's subordinate. Once the fabric interconnect begins to reboot, we'll see on console the bootloader image that begins to load. And there it is right there where it says booting kickstart image uh, and the URL to the boot flash. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that URI for the boot flash uh, kickstart image and we are simply going to paste that into our text editor uh, so that we can hang on to that for a bit later. Next we'll see our system image start to boot and as soon as that pops up we'll also go ahead and grab that URI and there it is again uh, uncompressing system image uh, boot flash colon slash installables etc etc so we're going to go ahead and copy that and also paste that into our text editor and those are the two image names that we need to know from our standard boot procedure to be able to go ahead and reboot these things safely and get them back up to the right image so next the fabric interconnect will finish booting we could probably interrupt this although I did not in my tests and I've sped that up a little bit to save you some time and as you can see now, we're going to go ahead and power cycle the same Fabric Interconnect again. And this time, we're going to break the boot procedure in order to prevent the system from booting automatically and instead drop us to the bootloader prompt. And so this time, as soon as we see the boot banner start, we're going to mash Control, Shift, and R. And with a little luck, that'll drop us right to the loader prompt. As you can see, we can run a directory and we do see some boot image names and kickstart image names, but these are not our currently running versions. That's why we don't want to use these and instead have to rely on the notes that we saved into our text editor a few minutes ago. Now, here's the thing. We're not actually going to finish booting the subordinate fabric interconnect right now. We're going to leave it in limbo at its loader prompt. And instead, we're going to switch over to the A fabric interconnect, our active unit, and we're going to power cycle that. Now, of course, as soon as you power cycle that A Fabric Interconnect, you've broken all connectivity into the UCS, and the UCS is effectively down. So you'll certainly want to make sure that you've shut down all your workloads through whatever means you can remotely access them before executing this procedure. This is a completely disruptive procedure, if that's not clear at this point. So as soon as our Fabric Interconnect power cycles, we'll start to see it go through the boot process again. And again, as soon as we see the bootloader's banner, we're going to hit Control-Shift-R, and that should drop us back into the loader prompt. 
And again, if we run a directory, we'll see some kickstart and system image names, but these are not the image uh, versions that our UCS was actually running. So instead, we're going to copy those from the notes that we took when we rebooted the subordinate. We're going to copy those, and then we're going to refer to Cisco's documentation, which reminds us that we're going to use the boot command to manually kick off the bootloader with the kickstart image that we actually want our system to load. Now, as soon as that kickstart image kicks off, it'll boot for about a minute, which I've sped up here, and then it'll drop us to an exec prompt within the kickstart image itself. And as soon as we're there, we can then follow Cisco's documented procedure by going into configuration mode with the config term command, and then running the admin password command to set the password for the admin user. Now this is just my lab environment, so I don't mind that you saw my password there, but do keep in mind that the password will be set in clear text. Once you've completed that, you simply exit from config mode, and now, referring back to our documentation, we see that our next step is to use the load command to kick off the loading of the actual system image, which will bring our UCS Fabric Interconnect up to full functionality. So we paste that in, we hit enter, and very shortly after that, the system image will begin to load. Now, UCS takes several minutes to load, so I've sped this up for you quite a bit here. This actually took about uh, four minutes for the UCS to come all the way to the login prompt. Once our Fabric Interconnect finishes booting, we should be able to use the admin username with the password that we reset from the kickstart image. And as you can see, using the password that we set a few minutes ago, my login did succeed and my Fabric Interconnect has recovered with its existing configuration. As you can see, I noted in the command line here, we will now boot the secondary Fabric Interconnect again. And I did this just by power cycling it. We probably, in fact, could have left the Fabric Interconnect just powered off the entire time we did the reset procedure. But during my lab testing here, I left the secondary at the bootloader prompt. So we go ahead and uh, power cycle the secondary Fabric Interconnect again. And we'll see some messages coming up on the primary Fabric Interconnect's console indicating that the L1 and L2 links are coming up and down and things of that nature. And this will go on again for several more minutes. Now as we see the Fabric Interconnect uh, finish booting, we will find ourselves back at the login prompt for the subordinate Fabric Interconnect. What you may find though is until they have fully synced, the new password that you've set on the primary may not work yet on the subordinate. So don't panic if you get a login failure. Uh, this happened to me for a couple more minutes. If you switch back to the A Fabric Interconnect, and run the show cluster state command, we'll be able to see the status of the HA cluster and we'll see that it's currently not ready on the peer fabric interconnect. So that's how we know that our login uh, still isn't going to work yet because there hasn't been a configuration sync. And we try a few more times here, we'll see that it may still not work uh, for a period of a couple of minutes. Eventually though, things will settle out and our username and password for the B Fabric Interconnect will succeed. And there we go, we've got a good login to the B Fabric Interconnect. And if we run that show cluster state command again on the A Fabric Interconnect, we'll see that we are HA ready. And that's a really good sign. So now it's time to load up our browser and point it back to our UCS manager cluster VIP address, at which point we should be able to use our new credentials to log into UCS. So we enter our reset credentials, hit the logon button, and we are able to access our UCS manager again. Now, UCS manager is going to have a number of alarms. Everything's just going to be starting up at the first time we first point we access it here. So, don't panic. It will take several more minutes for all the alarms to clear and all of our uh, service profiles to boot back up and things of that nature. But I've done this in the lab a couple of times now, and the procedure does work reliably. So if you need to do a password reset with UCS Manager, it's certainly possible. Just keep in mind the fact that it's going to take about 30 to 45 minutes, and most of that time uh, UCS will be completely down, and all of your service profiles will have to be down and inaccessible. I hope you found this video tutorial useful, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Thanks a lot.